Guitar practice session 11 to 24. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on and then give you a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions generate a routine, help me to verbalize what I'm trying to learn to get it in my mind better, possibly provide information to others learning similar things, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to do the types of things that I'm trying to do here. I do think that making presentations as though someone's listening, even if if they're not is useful because it helps us to verbalize things in ways we otherwise might not so if you take any of these resources and want to make your own practice sessions don't worry about plagiarism or anything like that we'll try to provide the resources to you such as this worksheet which is orientated from the perspective of playing the guitar from behind the guitar so if you took the guitar put the strings on the screen we would have the low string on top top to bottom left to right same orientation as us behind the guitar i will flip my guitar around so it looks like i'm left-handed so that everything's kind of going the same way you have my guitar matching the same way as the worksheet which matches your guitar from the perspective of behind the guitar so we can focus our attention not on spinning the guitar around in our mind but on just working through the fretboard. This time we're gonna be continuing on with uh, the minor scale, otherwise known as the Aeolian mode. I start off by just describing kind of, you know, what we're gonna do, because I keep on wanting to get in the big picture in my mind. Then we're gonna focus in on the seventh, meaning we wanna look at that particular interval, noting as we do, the one three five of a minor chord and then adding the seven when we get into the actual fingering of it we jump on over then to look at the big picture which i'll just recap here we go to the related modes tab and i look at the idea that i'd like to learn all of the modes right i'd like to say okay i want to know kind of how to play all the modes in relation i want to know the related modes and how they are compared to each other as as well as the complement modes but we're kind of working on the related modes here and the way to do that is i compare everything to the major mode that's one way to do it i use a modal numbering system i would like to be able to make a chord from every note that is in any uh, mode, whether I'm playing in the major mode, the minor mode, or any other major or minor mode, Locrian, Dorian, or maybe not Locrian so much, but be nice, but Dorian, Phrygian, and so on and so forth. I go through the idea of how best to do that, and I think that would, of course, be that we look at the intervals related to the major scale and compare the other major modes to it, and then the minor scale and compare the minor modes to it. Uh, which is a step up in possibly complexity than just simply learning the one, uh, th four, five have major chord constructions and the two, three, and six have minor chord constructions because that we want to break out of the box of that only being applied to the major key, which is problem number one. And problem number two, that only tells us basically the difference in the triad, which has a different third in it, doesn't tell us about the seven, nine, 11, and 13 which I can play, which would still be in the same uh, chord. So I go over those, that idea, and then we jump back on over here and I look at uh, the seventh interval, which is possibly the most important interval for a chord construction beyond the one, three, five to build an actual chord. As we look at it, we'll see it in alignment with building a chord as well. And I want to be able to find any note on the guitar and then find every seventh that is available to me related to that note of which there's only like six generally per note because uh there's only there's only six strings so if i choose this note there's only going to be six strings that have a unique seventh in them it will be a unique seventh as long as that we're within a 12 note span meaning one one 12 note span because that's going to be an octave and then once i know that on like the middle of the guitar i could in theory move that relative shape anywhere on the fretboard like copying and pasting in an excel worksheet and the related positions will be the same so we work through that between the top string and then with the d and then i kind of putter out i don't get quite through the next string down and then i go into playing mainly hallelujah which is actually in a key of c i just kind of noodle around with it hopefully it, it doesn't plagiarize i don't hit any because i don't play it like exactly like 
<laughs> anywhere near to. So, so in any case, I, I I play with that. I don't think that's a problem. And I and I because uh, uh, I normally see that in the key of C, which is normally what you would see it as. But it plays almost equally in the key of C or the related minor, which is the is the key of A minor. So C major, A minor. So I kind of analyze that a little bit more and think about it in my mind, focusing in on it as A minor, looking at the chords within it uh, from the perspective of relative positions from the minor scale rather than the relative positions of uh, the major scale, just to get a different kind of look at it. And then I just kind of play around with that, trying to mess with the lyrics of it because there's different lyrics of it and trying to get an idea of lightening up my strumming so that I can sing over it, which I don't do a lot because usually I just kind of like to improvise and noodle around as like a stress relief kind of exercise. So I don't do a lot of trying to sing over a thing. So, I was, so you know, I mess with that. <laughs> and so that's what I do. Today, we're continuing on with the minor scale, otherwise known as mode number six, the Aeolian mode. But this time we're focused on the seventh interval of the minor scale or Aeolian mode, mode number six, which could be arguably the most important interval beyond the three intervals typically used to create a chord when we're looking at intervals from the perspective of chord creation. In other words, when we build a chord, we're usually thinking about triad chords. We pick every other note, which is every other kind of interval, the one, three, five. And now we're looking to add another note to say the chord. The next one would be the seven. Remember when we build the chords, we're basically gonna be skipping every other note within the scale. So th if this is our scale, seven notes out of 12, we skip every other note to get the one, uh, three, five. And now we skip every other note to get to seven. So seven is the last odd number that we have in the scale. When we go beyond that to the nine, 11, and 13, we don't have any more notes to hit. What is really happening in those, we're gonna go around kind of in a circle back to the two, the four, and the six. So just be aware of that. We're just kind of skipping every other note. So I believe that the seventh is gonna be inherently useful for us to be to be working with. However, I do wanna take a step back and look at the big picture, particularly with regard to the seventh, because uh, now we can think about how the seventh's gonna be related to the other minor modes, as well as when is it different than say the major mode. So to get that kind of in our mind, we want to take a step back and look at the big picture before we drill down and get into the weeds of finding all of the relative positions of the seventh on the fretboard. So let's go back to our relative uh, positions over here tab, and we can see up top our project is. We want to learn basically all the modes. I'd like to be able to play within the modes. I would like to be able to, to uh, transpose from one mode to another mode, shift my mind in the perspective from one to the other, and I would like to be able to pick any, any note or any relative position in each of the modes and know what chord I wanna create from that, the baseline triad chord, in other words, is it major or minor, but also then the seven, the nine, 11, and 13 possibilities that I can add to that. What's the way that we can do that? What's the systematic way that we can kind of get a handle on that information? Well, the traditional, I think the, the most useful and efficient way is using the major key as our reference tool. Most we Western music does, even though the major is just the, A the Ionian mode. It's just one of the modes, but we typically use it as our point of reference in Western music in part because it's the most popular mode and therefore it just makes sense to do that. And then I'm gonna learn the relative positions one through seven. I usually usually think about it in terms of the key of C when you're practicing, but that's just because the notes don't have any sharps and flats. It doesn't really matter when we think about relative positions. So I wanna think about the relative positions and the fact that there's no sharps and flats gives me a check figure in my mind when I'm working in a worksheet, for example. If I see a sharp and a flat and I'm working in the key of C, I know that there's a problem with it. And I'm not so concerned in memorizing the notes rather than knowing that there's a problem in my pattern because then I, then I can pick that up, right? 
So what we're really focusing in on is the relative positions, one through seven, and then how can I create a chord from each of those notes? What would be the chord that I can make that would still be in the same key? We typically memorize that the one, four, five, the blues progression, in essence, is a major, and that's just how it works, because if I start on whatever the note, the four is, and I pick every other note, I happen to end up with a major chord, is how that's constructed. And then the two, three, and six are minor, and then the seven is locrian. So that's great, but then when I go to another key, such as the Lydian, for example, then I still have seven notes, and they are the same notes if it's the related Lydian, but they're in a different order. How do I figure that out and figure then whether I make a major or minor chord if I'm playing in a different mode? One way is to compare it to the major mode, right? And so one way I can do that is say, well, the Lydian has a relative position if I give it an absolute numbering system of four, meaning the Lydian starts at, on the fourth. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the Lydian has a relative, but yeah. It's going to be, that's on the door, and that's why, here. Lydian starts on uh, the fourth. So if I name it the fourth, I can see it's three steps down from the Ionian. And therefore, if I take whatever mode I'm on as a numbering system related to the major scale, minus one, that's the number of steps down. So that would give me three. So if I said, if I'm on the Lydian, and I say it's four minus three, and then I want to get to, let's say, the six. What is the six? Uh, six plus three is nine. There's only seven modes. So nine uh, minus seven is two, which gives me what I would call mode number two or relative position two compared to the major scale, which I know the two, three, and six are ones that I build a minor chord from. But beyond that, I also know it's the Dorian. So that's one way I can kind of tie these things out. Now, if I, if I go back on up, I also want to know the 7, 9, 11, and 13. So just remembering that the 1, 4, 5 gives me a major chord and the 2, 3, 6 gives me a minor does not tell me what 7, 13, 11, 7, 9, 11, and 13 I should play. doesn't give me that information because it's not always the same from major to minor. So how can I figure that out? Well, we can say that I'm going to learn all of the intervals for the major scale. So we learn all of these intervals. And then I compare those to the other major modes, major modes being those defined with a major third, which happens to be the four and the five, which are the Lydian and the Mixolydian. And those will only have one interval difference. So that's the most systematic way that I see to figure it. You say, okay, I'm, I memorize all these modes, and then I look at and find the two modes that have the exception to the rule. And then when I play the four and the five, or whenever, no matter what mode I'm in, I play the absolute position four Lydian mode, the absolute mode number five Mixolydian mode. I can then have that added information to add a little bit different color, still being in the same key, than other people might have access to if they're only playing in triads and not really understanding whether, when, or which chords to play, right? They don't know when to play. They might know the chord names, but if you don't know where the relative position or mode is, you don't know if it's in the same key or not is kind of the issue. And then on the minor side, we can choose the minor, which is the Aeolian. So for whatever reason, the Aeolian became the minor mode. So the minor mode has the biggest flavor of our chords is the third, has a minor third. That's what defines it as a minor mode. The Aeolian became the main minor. And so then if I learn all of the intervals for the main minor, the Aeolian, which are in essence opposite of the Ionian, then then. I can compare the other minor modes to it, which is the two and the three, the Dorian and the Phrygian. And like with the major mode, there's only going to be one distinct interval between uh, these two modes and the related minor. So that'll give me, that's our picture. That's the picture that we're trying to come up with. Now, as we're on the minor, so I'm trying to memorize the baseline for the minor, the Aeolian. So I could go down here and make it the one and so I can say this is in the minor mode, Aeolian. So now the, 
I'm in the key of minor, all the same notes, but it's the one, and I'm looking at the seventh. I wanna see these intervals like we did with the major as my baseline for the minors. It's the main minor, and then I will compare the Dorian and Phrygian to it to look at the two intervals that are gonna be different here. Now, just a heads up here, the two intervals I believe are gonna be uh, the, the two, uh, which is gonna be equivalent to the nine out here, and then uh, the, the six, which I believe is the 13, right? Okay. So we'll talk more about those differences later, but first, I wanna make sure that I get all of these intervals down on the minor, and then I can find the differences, which are those two differences over here. So just looking at that, what's interesting that now that we're working on the seven, the other thing we can kind of keep in mind is that the seventh is a minor seven. So it's the opposite of the, the major key, which is what you would expect. You have a major seven and a minor seven. However, we'll, we'll remember that the Mixolydian here uh, had a, has a minor seven as well. So when we were up here, note that, that we had the, the majors and then the minor, and then there was a difference in the Mixolydian, had one interval difference. It has a minor seven in it. So that's what makes the Mixolydian kind of bluesy. It's kind of in between in that sense because it has that really useful and possibly most important kind of note that's beyond the triad, the seventh, which is minor instead of uh, major. So when I go, so that's useful to then, when we're looking at the minor key, to look at this seventh, and remember that will be good for the, all the minors, the modes, the Dorian and the Phrygian, and it's good for the Mixolydian, so, which is the bluesy kind of uh, mode, or one way you can think of like a major blues as in essence just being the Mixolydian uh, mode. All right, so we'll keep that in mind. So the intervals that we're looking at here, we have the perfect first, we have the two note away major second, which from a chord standpoint is basically equivalent to the nine. And then we've got a three note away uh, minor third. That's gonna be the distinctive interval that defines whether the chord as well as the mode is major or minor. We've got a five note away perfect fourth, which is the same for the major and the minor. We've got uh, a seven note away perfect fifth which uh, is gonna be the same for the major and the minor, the perfects are the same. And then on the sixth, we have an eight note away minor six, which would be equivalent to uh, the 11. And then on the seven, I'm sorry, the six would be equivalent to the 13 and the four uh, would be equivalent to the 11. And then on the seven, we've got that 10 note away minor uh, seven, which is gonna be our point uh, of focus here. All right, 10 note away, minor second. Now, remember also that with the minor scale, all, you, all you're gonna do is take the major intervals and then flat all the majors to minors. Uh, so, and, the, and we'll make them minors instead of majors, except for the minor second, which for whatever reason is still major, which is weird. But I think uh, if you think about it, the one that does have a minor second is gonna be the Phrygian, the minor second being equivalent to the nine. Okay, so given that, let's go back over here and let's just work through this and say, let me find all of my minor sevens, which are gonna be useful for chord constructions in all of the minor keys, as well as the Mixolydian, the fifth of a relative major key. Uh, so we're gonna say, let's start on the A. How do we do this? We're gonna choose one note. I'm just gonna try to go down the middle of the guitar again, and basically then look at every interval on each string, which means there's only gonna be like six options uh, per string, because there's only six strings and there's gonna only, only be one seventh on each string between a 12 note fret frame, because that's uh, all that's gonna be within one string. All right, so that's gonna be that. Now, as we do this, we'll also then see if we can build a chord around it, remembering that when we add the seventh, we usually think of the chord as the one, three, five bass plus the seven. But sometimes on the guitar in particular, we can't get the one, three, five. So if I can't get them all, I'll drop the five and get the one, three and seven. 
And if I can't get that, I'll drop the three and have the one, five, seven. And you could even imagine dropping the one, but still thinking about it as in essence, uh, an, an A chord, minor chord, right? And have the three, five, seven as well, but I'm not gonna focus on that too much. All right, so let's do this. We're gonna go here and say, all right, where's the seven? The seven note for the minor seven is a 10 note away uh, minor seven as opposed to a 11 note away major seven. So we're, we're flatting the seven. You can think about this similarly to the third. Remember that the relative position one and five will be the same relative positions. The third for the minor will be flattened and the seventh will also be flattened uh, when we think about it as compared to like the, the major scale, right? So it's, it's working in a similar fashion as we would expect for the minors compared to the majors flattening the minor. All right, so if I go here on the same string, we'll go back here. So if I go behind it, notice if I look at this and I say, well, it's gonna be 10 notes up, that's quite a distance. There's only 12 notes. So if I get to anything that's above six that I'm looking for, I'm probably gonna look for the inverse and go backwards, right? So I'm gonna say, all right, that's, that's, a, that's a ways up going that way. What about the other way? Well, it would be 12 minus 10, which would be two. So if I, I know there's two note distance this way, so if I go from this G to the A, it'd be a two note away uh, major second. And therefore, if I go from the A to the G, it would be a uh, 10 note away minor seven. So what do I have with that? I also have back there a three underneath it right there. So I could arpeggiate that. So I could go, this is one, three, seven, one, three, minor seven, one, three, minor seven, one, minor three, minor seven, one, minor three, minor seven, right? And then I could arpeggiate it this way. I see that I have a three up here going this way. So I could go one, three, seven, or maybe try to grab it like this, even though that's a stretch. One, three, seven. One, three, seven. One, three, seven. One, three, seven. Right, I could try to do something like that. Uh, I have a five right here, of course. So I could arpeggiate that way by saying, I'm going to go one, five, seven. 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 So that's doable. Okay, what else we got? Let's go down to the next one down. So now I'm going underneath, so it's gonna be 10 notes away because it's a minor seven. So this will be five notes between these two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 10 notes away, that makes sense. That's a 10 note away, uh, minor seven. Inverse, two note away, uh, major second. Is there anything else I can add to that? It's still, it's a bit of a stretch, not too bad. Uh, notice I could do like kind of my minor, maybe a shuffle pattern like we do in the majors I was kind of experimenting with. Because with the major we do this. Right, but now I have, and then I could reach up to the seven if it was a major. We could do the same thing here, but instead of going here, I have to reach up to that seven. So I could try to do like a minor shuffle pattern. It's quite a stretch. I could and then I have so now I'm picking I'm just trying to come up with a cool pattern like that because I can pick this string up and I get my 11 uh, underneath here so I can go from here to, and then I could try to get that F in there from time to time even maybe
play with that. It's kind of fun to do. Anyways, uh, what else do we have here? <clears throat> There's not much. Else. I don't think I can grab like that. Would be difficult. Yeah, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. So I have a third back here. It's quite a, you can arpeggiate that, but it's kind of a stretch. All right, let's move on. This is the shape I think might be most familiar. So we could say this would be the seven. So that shape is gonna work. Uh, that's probably the most familiar shape, like I say. Uh, and it'll work from here, it'll be the same here to here, but then when I go down to this G, it's gonna be a problem because the fault line is down here, right? So, so because this is going across three strings, it's gonna shift once we get past the fault line. So as long as we recognize that, then, and that's of course 10 notes away because it's gonna be just five, 10. So what do we have with that? We've got a third back here, so that's nice. So now I've got a third back here. So that would be a one, three, seven. I've got an extra finger here that I can't do a whole lot with. Well, I could grab that B right there just so I could do something. That B would be a nine. Okay, cool. All right, so then uh, I have a five this way. So I can play it like that, but I could probably be easier to bar it. And this would be like my A minor shape, of course, my bar chord would normally look like I'm trying to get my pick in my pinky. Get the pick in the pinky. So my bar chord, like that, we can just deconstruct the good old bar chord. But then I'm like, uh, reveal, then I'm like, reveal the minor seven, boom. So that's obviously a very nice thing to do, and you could do it on any of the minors, whether you're on the one, four, five of the minor scale or the two, three, six of the major, and it's safe. All of these are safe across all the minors. we got here so I have that that I have another third down here which is interesting so so I could just try to pick just those three notes maybe even ignoring everything else but basically if you borrowing everything off now I'm picking up the E so see if that sounds different than, than this. You got this versus. Only having three strings ring out a little softer might be nice sometimes. Uh, but uh, uh, I've got a fifth out here. That's pretty 
far away. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, let's move on. Let's move on, shall we? Uh, to, now this looks like quite a stretch going both ways here. A little bit less of a stretch this way. That would be 5, 10, 15, 14, 13, wait a sec, 5, 10, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, yeah. All right, so I'd have to go all the way back to that, and that would be, if it wasn't an open string, quite a stretch. So probably not the one, not the go-to. So I see it there, but I'm gonna move on. Let's go here. That would be five, 10, 15, and then I'm gonna bring it down. 15 minus 12 is five minus two, which is three. And then I have to go up the fault line, going this way, three plus five is eight. 9, 10. So we have from here to 5, 6, 7, 8. That G right there. I know that G. I know that guy. Alright. So then I could pick up my 5 right here. So if I was on, if I was doing my normal A bar chord thing, I could be like, there's my normal A bar chord, like this. But then I, then I just reach down here to the G. Or I can do it this way. It's kind of interesting because I could, this whole bar is good. So like I could like remove this finger and bring it down there. And now I've got two G's if I did that. G revealed. Grab another G down here. Two G's. Or, and then I could move this finger down revealing the D and pick up a G. So now I've got the D, which is the 11. So normal A minor, reveal the G, double G, Re double A, made double root, and then revealing the D, which is the nine, or the 11. All right, so some, options all right let's see what else we have uh let's go down to here there's our g so we saw the g was right here or the seventh so the seventh is going to be on the same string on the bottom because that's how it works man so because we have two e, e string on the top and the bottom so I could bar this whole thing off, but then pick up, <laughs> you, you would think in theory that would be easy to do. It's not very comfortable. Anyway, I don't think that's the most useful one. <laughs> I'm gonna move on. Let's go to the next string down and we'll do one on this one. Let's pick up that D and do it again. So if I go to this D, there's the D. And now we've revealed a string above it. So I'll have to go up there. All the shapes below it will be the same until they go past the fault line. And so that's what I wanna be able to recognize. All right, before I do that, I'll do a joke here. It's gonna be somewhat political cause we're in, we're, we're going down to the wire on the political jokes. So I have to I have to cash in, even though I think it's not really cashing in. I think it's actually hurting me uh, from a review standpoint. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. It's a shadow ban. They're shadow banning me. I'm telling you. I'm gonna get some coffee. Here we go. It's still good practice. Practice joke session. 
dang progressive deconstructivist liars. They make they make you want to throw the biggest slur ever ever made in the English language at them. The biggest slur ever. A slur even more offensive than like the N-word or calling people a fascist with a little tiny mustache under their nose. It's even worse than that. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'll probably get banned from social media for saying it, but I just can't hold back my vile disdain for those, those lying deconstructivist propagandists who are just a bunch of garbage. That's right. I said it. That's right. And I'm not going to be taking it back either. They're garbage, man. I'm not, I'm not changing the transcript, adding an apostrophe like some cowardly lying manipulator would do. No, I, I, w I was talking about all the, all those lying deconstructivist propagandists, man. They'll, they'll probably throw me in jail for hate speech using such offensive language like garbage, but whatever, you know? Honestly, like what, what is it with the word garbage that like hit the trigger word like all of a sudden? Garbage, out of all the things, garbage hits the trigger word over here like right before. I mean, did, 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 I feel like people just got numb from being called really actual vile things like to the point where they, did, where they no longer work anymore, right? But for some reason then they, they left like this, this gap for garbage to hit, to somehow hit a nerve. You know, people are like, People are like calling each other like, you're a fascist, communist, bigoted, Stalin, Hitler, Darth Vader, Sauron, Lord Voldemort, head. And then, and then people are like, whatever, dude, heard it all before, whatever, get over it. But then somebody says like, you're garbage. And people are like, how dare you? Did you just call me the G word? I've never heard such vile disparagement of my of my person's character it's ridiculous i mean seriously what 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 is going on here garbage that's that's what they got for the west yeah i think we need i think we need to dig a little a little into the garbage a little deeper into the garbage at least being a little bit more creative than just garbage like a blanket term of, of that's the most offensive so so it's like no you're not just garbage man you got to go, you got to get better than that. You're the, you're the snot filled moldy tissue covered in five day old coffee grounds at the bottom of the can, man. You're the, you're the stinking tuna mush my cousin coughed up after a fish bone was stuck in his throat. You're the, you're the gunk I pulled out of the sink after my garbage disposal stopped working. That, that would be a little bit better, I feel like. Seriously, they... They've got us afraid to say so many words these days, like so many words people are like have cold sweats. People no longer like get afraid of doing speeches while naked. They get afraid of saying like the wrong word somewhere. That's how that's how crazy it's gotten. And, and if we're if we're too scared crapless to even say the word garbage, you know, we're in trouble. That's not that's not good. That's not good. You can't cancel the can. You can't cancel the can. The garbage can, that is. All right, there's my rant. It's probably going to get me canceled. That's okay. Whatever, dude. I'll say garbage anytime I want to say garbage. Tell me, don't you try to get in my... F I've All right, now wait a sec. That's not the D that I was looking for. That's a on the green D. Uh, here we go. Okay. So now we have above this so now let's go above it first so we so so i'm looking for the seventh so i i'm doing the inverse now when i go above it i look for the inverse so if i'm looking for a seven note away uh i'm sorry a 10 note away minor seven the inverse is 12 minus 10 which is a two note away major second so if I go up, I'd say this would be what I would call negative five, four, three, two. So if I'm on this D, this C, then if I go from C to D, that's pinky to pointer, a whole step, which is a two note away major second, inverse, therefore, from D to C, seven note away, that's going to be our seven note away, uh, I'm sorry, our ten note away minor seven. Hopefully I'm getting the terminology right here. 10 note away, minor 7. That's what we're looking for. All right. 
So there is that. What can I do with that? Well, I can arpeggiate here. So I've got this. Uh, so I've got one, five, uh, seven. One, five, minor, seven. One, five, minor, seven. One, five, minor, seven. That's interesting. One, five, minor, seven. Okay. And so what else do I have? I have a... Uh, third back here so I have boom there's the minor third and then I'm gonna grab it this way and then my seven that's like a diminished uh, that's like a that would be the same chord as a diminished C chord but I'm looking at it from the perspective of a D minor with a minor seven in it. So I know that shape. I know that shape. I've seen it before. And then I can I have a fifth here. So I could of course go one five and then seven, maybe this way. And then I have that would be like if I played my normal minor, A minor shape, I can always grab that. That's interesting to know. I don't normally do that, but notice this is my A minor, D minor shape looking like that. That's my normal bar shape. And it's good to know that I could reach up here and grab that seven. Notice what I do when I do that. Like if I went from this shape, I could of course reveal this note, which is already a minor seven. And if I want to make it heavier, I can grab it up here. can reveal I can then pull the I can say let's move this down here revealing the G which is an 11 and the 7 up top so I could be like okay there's my D minor A minor shape revealing the 7 and now I'm going to reveal the uh the what am I revealing? <laughs> the G, which is an 11, and grab up here. Or I can reveal both of those. And I want to grab my third. The third's kind of hard to grab that way. Shouldn't be. Wait a sec. It's right there. So I've got this. Reveal the 11. And then I can grab this 11. Reveal. I can grab this. Or just this. Anyway, alright. My hand is hurting. Uh, let's see. So that is that. I went to this one. I went to, okay, so let's go now. Let's go down here. So this is the one where I'm on the same string. I'm, I'm looking for a 10 note away minor seven. So 10 would be quite far going this way. So the inverse would be 10 minus uh, 12 minus 10, which would be 2. So I go back 2. So the distance from this C to D would be a 2 note away major second. Therefore, from D to C would be a 7. A, no, I'm sorry. From this going this way, 2 note away major second going this way, a 10 note away minor 7. Okay. So then I've got the same shape, in essence, we looked at before. 
So I have a third underneath it, so I can say this is the one, three, five, one, three, I'm sorry, one, three, seven, one, three, minor seven, one, three, minor seven, one, three, minor seven, one, three, minor seven. So I have that. I have above it here a five. So I could say this is, well, let's just do arpeggiate the five and get rid of the three. We'll say this is gonna be one, five, oh, yeah, that's right. One, five, seven, minor seven, one, five, minor seven, one, five, minor seven, one, five, minor seven, one, five, minor seven. All right, interesting. I've got a three down here, so I could go one, three, three, minor seven, one, three, minor seven, one, three, minor seven. Anyway, all right, let's see what else we got. If I move down here, we're looking for a 10 note away. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 is out here. So that makes sense. 10th fret, D string. That would be a 10 note away minor seven. So that's the one where I could say I do a minor shuffle pattern. So again, like this would be like I was playing. If I was in Mixolydian, I have the, the six there, but I don't have that now because I'm in a minor, but I have the seventh, which is out here. So, and then I could also bar this one off so I can get like a minor shuffle pattern, but it's quite a stretch. I don't usually do it. because it's it's doable to get a cool shuffle pattern but my it's quite a stretch i'm going to play with that more i've got a third here so i could be like one three seven or one three seven that's interesting too So it's interesting that shuffle pattern. I have a, if I put my fingers this way, I got my third right there. kind of fun to do if my hand if it didn't hurt my hand it would be fun I just need to stretch so let's go down to this one so this is the one that probably comes to mind most for the seven so boom boom and that shape is the same shape we saw with the A whoops and that it was the A same shape here so there it is and it, but then when I go down to the next one it's going to be altered because the fault line is right between these two strings so this is the same shape so if I take that that's a 10 note away because it's 510 that makes sense I have a third back here so boom 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 <laughs> fifth above it I could add but that's hard not very easily to add the fifth it's easier when it would be easier if it was the major because if it was a major third it would be up here right but I could add the fifth on top if I wanted to it's hard to mute okay 
I have a another on the bottom. Would that be easier to add if I did it this way? It's also difficult because of that reach. So really it's just gonna be like, I think that's the easiest fingering. And then I can mute all the strings below it. I also could bar them if I wanted to. So I could play this and bar that, which would be another root and then possibly pick up the 11. That would be an 11. Or I can not bar, I can, I can mute them like this, or I can bar them. Why not bar them? Oh wait, I'm on the wrong ones. <laughs> there. Not. Okay, I've got my fifth. It's kind of interesting the shape because you get this like, like uh, I don't know what is what shape is that? You see what I mean though? It's like a star, I guess, a force. <laughs> uh, so I have this one. Might be because usually, well, that's on the wrong string again, dude. Like this. Or I could just bar it off, which would be so that would be like my minor shape. So now when I was on the A, when I was on the A minor, the shape looks like this. But now I'm on the D, so it's an it's an A minor shape on the T. From a cage system perspective, I'd have here. That's my normal shape. Then I reveal the C by going by lifting up this D and reveal. So that's probably the most common way to do it. And then I can go back to doing it this way though. we got uh, let's move on moving on moving on over five ten I'm looking for ten notes away uh, then I have to move up here to twelve because of the fault line twelve and then wait <laughs> five ten fifteen uh, fourteen thirteen twelve eleven ten so it would be here back to the C which is a little bit more doable because the fault line pushed it up so because now we're we've crossed the fault line with this one so this shape would have been back if I was from the A it would have been back to the G but now it's been pushed up because of the because of the fault line the San Andreas shifted up the plate tectonics so now I'm gonna say okay so is there anything else I can add with that could I get my third right there I was like, wait, the third is back here. So it's kind of interesting because normally I would have, here's my one, and then the five is right here, right? The five is right here. So that would be my normal triad, like a C minor shaped triad. Which is cool in this position because then I can, like I, we looked at before, this right here is actually the my, the blues note, and then I can reveal the 11, which is that G. Except the B will ring out, but I can mute the B, and then I can put my finger on the C. So 
I can have the G ring out and the C. So that's kind of interesting. So I can, if I do this shape, I can go from here back to here to the blues note, to the open, and then down here and pick up the seven. So let's do that. So here's my normal. in the seven. Ah, that's stretchy, but kind of cool play with that all right uh, that's pretty much all I can do there I think let's go to the next one uh, we already did that one what am I doing I'm down here now I think so I go from here to seven eight five six seven, yeah does that sound right five six seven eight right here Mejor. So this is the one where I can play my minor shape, which looks like this. Da, 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 da. I can reveal the D. I can reveal the C here. And then still grab down here. But it's hard to grab because then I can go... It's a little bit more difficult to do because I can't get that third. So I'm losing my third and I'm going back to the nine. This is dropping back to the nine to reach it. But that's cool. So here's my normal shape. Reveal the C. Shifting. Whoops. Get that C. hand is hurting you should stop if your hand hurts stopping is for wussies I'm gonna keep okay <laughs> let's go to the G one more I've got one more one more round uh, G okay so now on this one it's gonna be the same relationship right above it but now we've revealed a new string, so a new opportunity. And then it's gonna be the same relationship right below it, but then we have the fault line between these two. So our normal shape that goes from here to here has now been pushed up from here to here. Okay, so let's go above it first. So we say we have a, a it's usually a, a, a 10 note away minor seven, 12 minus 10 is two uh, uh, notes away. So this is the wrong, um, that's a fifth. I'm looking for a two note away. So that would be over here because it would be five, four, three, two. It would be negative five, four, three, two. Que esta pasando. Yeah, it's the wrong way. What am I doing? Just stop. Just stop right now. You're going, you're just messed. Negative five, four, three, two. Dyslexic going the wrong way, son of a. I know where I'm going. I know which way I'm going. Follow me. This is going to be a two note away. Major second, therefore the inverse is an 11, a 10 note away, minor seven. Okay. So then we have the arpeggiation above it. Uh... 
that's going to be a 1, 5, 7, 1, 5, minor 7, 1, 5, minor 7, 1, 5, minor 7. And then we have a third back here. Uh, here. Wait, that's the wrong. I want to keep that one. The third, minor third, which would be boom, boom. It's interesting. Shape goes up here. It's kind of stretchy because that third. Is that right? Uh, wait a second. The minor third is right there. And then I want to reach up to the F. It's an interesting shape. I don't do that much. Hmm. Hopefully I got that right. I'm a little... My brain is... I think I need to stop soon. Maybe I should just stop. I was going to try to mess... Let's stop here. I, I think I'm doing more harm than good maybe now. So let me try... I'm just going to try to sing the uh, hallelujah song again because I have my own little I, gotta, I haven't played with that for a while because the hallelujah song is basically in the key of C but you can kind of think about it in the key of A minor because it goes so you're kind of playing almost an equal C to A minor. So I was thinking, I've looked at it from the perspective of C. So since A minor is the related minor and you can almost argue that it's in the key of A minor in essence, even though it kind of starts on a C, but it still kind of plays almost an equal emphasis on the minor as the major. So let's, let's say it's in A minor and just analyze it from that perspective. So, it's, so, it's, so it starts off So if I looked at it from the minor's perspective, it would be number-wise, number-wise, it would be a third, right? The third chord to the one, to the one, to the three, to the one. And then it goes to an F, which is uh, the lit the the sixth of the minor and then it goes to a G which is the seventh of the minor and then it goes to a C which is the third so if I was looking at it from the perspective of, of a C scale which I can see here I don't even have to go because the C scale is my modal numbering system. The modes, I'm going to give an absolute numbering system based on the C scale. So if it was ordered by, I'm not saying C scale, the major scale, which happens to be a C major in this case, but it would work with any modal scale. So if I said from the perspective of a major scale, it would be the one to the six, so that, right, because this is six, to the one to the six, Four to the five to the one. From the minor scale perspective, because it's all the same notes, I'm saying I'm I'm, I'm going to emphasize the minor. So from that perspective, I would be on. It would be going from the three chord to the one chord to the three chord to the one chord to the six chord to the seven chord, to the one chord. So that's going to be the perspective I'm looking at it from, minor's perspective. So I'm going to say, so I'm trying to work on picking loudly, but then making it soft when I sing over it. And then, which I'm not good at, because <laughs> I usually just jam around. 
just what I like to do to relieve stress, but I should sing a song because nobody, I don't impress people by just playing. They want to hear a song, you know? So it's like, they're like, that's lame. I don't even know what you're doing. And so it's like, okay, I can play it. Hallelujah. What the chord is, I want to know. Okay, okay. It goes like this the fourth, the fifth. The minor chord, the major lift. Wait a second. I thought it was only one chord. That was a whole bunch of chords that you play. I'm not even sure they're in the same. Okay, look. It does take more than one chord to please the Lord, all right? It's not quite that easy, but the point is the Lord likes his music. That's what I'm talking about. The Lord likes his music. That's why we say, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let me get to the next verse here. Uh, okay, here we go. Faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof. Her beauty in the moonlight overthrew ya. But she tied you to the kitchen chair. is not the smartest of heroes, you know I mean? Tied to a chair, hair cut off, sapping him up with strength. He's like, you know, I, I might have been betrayed here. I don't know. I'm kind of figuring it out, but not to worry. His hair will grow back at least, at least long enough to give him the strength to tear down this house alive. That's what I'm talking about. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Let me find the next lyric here that I know. There's a couple lyrics I don't know, but the one I know here is, uh, uh, where did it go? Uh, you took, no, that's not the one. I saw it like a second ago. Baby, I've been here before. There was a time you, maybe, okay, here's the one. Here's the one. by the way, as you clutch your spleen, trying to hold the blood in from the bullet lodged in there from the person that outdrew you. And then you, you aim your gun with the other hand as best you can, and you try to find a little justice in this cold, hard world. That's what I'm talking about. But it's not a crime that you'll hear tonight. It's not some victim who claims to see the light. No, it's a cold, it's a broken Alright, I don't think that was my best. I think I could do it better. Let me try it again. I could do it better. Alright, here we go. Tell me, okay, here we go. I'll tell you how it goes. Here we go. Goes like this. The fourth, the fifth. My God, the major left. <laughs> Wait, I got mixed up. Goes like this. The fourth, the fifth. My God, the major, major left. Uh, 
for the my chord major. Li- all right, one more time. One more time. Let me do it again. <laughs> Heard there was a circle that David played and it plays alone, but you don't really care for me. No, I do care. Tell me how the chord goes. All right, I'll tell you. I'll tell you how it goes. Goes like this the fourth bit. Minor chord, major lift. messed up. I think I feel like I'm mixing chord. The chorus is up. Let me do it again. <laughs> Heard there was a secret chord that David played and it plays alone, but you don't really care for me to do that. I do care. Tell me how. The- Alright, I'll tell you how it goes. I'll tell you how it goes. It goes like this. The fourth, the fifth. Final chord, major lift, the battle. Wait a second, wait, I, you said it was only one chord that pleases the Lord. That was a whole bunch of chords. All right, look, it takes more than one chord, all right, to please the Lord. It's not that easy, but the, the point is the Lord lacks his music. That's why we said, that's why we said, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. second verse. I have to look it up here. Oh, here it is. Your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof of beauty in the moonlight over But she had you to the kitchen chair. is not the smartest of you. He gets his hair cut off, sapping him of his strength, and then he sits there like, I don't know, maybe I've been betrayed here. <laughs> not to worry. At, at least his hair will grow back long enough to tear down this house of lies. Can I get a, can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next one, this one, I could find it faster this time. I don't know all these other verses. I can't do those while I'm performing. Maybe there, whoa, maybe there's a God above for me all I've ever learned from love. How does she get someone who I do love? The way you do that, by the way, is you clutch your spleen with one hand to hold in the blood from the bullet lodged in there from the person that outdrew you. You aim with your other hand as best you can and you try to find a little justice in the whole part of world. That's what I'm talking about. But it's not a crime that you'll see tonight. Not some beautiful place to see the light. It's a hole and it's a broken Do the funk version. Funk version.
good. Wonderful. All right. 